Okay, so I'd like to talk a little bit about incident response, how an agency should respond when there's an incident. The first order of business is to recognize that in every threat report I've ever read, the odds of being compromised show up as significantly more than 50%. I've seen everything from 68% on up to 98% estimates of how many organizations, private sector or public sector, have been or, are, or will be compromised. It really doesn't matter exactly which number you choose. The point is, it's very, very likely, more than even odds, that you will be compromised. So, reality number one, accept that you will be compromised and prepare for it. So, to prepare, what you need to do is to have a, a plan. Know exactly who is going to respond to what, how you're going to deal with each issue. And the plan needs to encompass more than just the technology staff, more than just the security staff, but everyone involved. The response to the press is very important. You can lose credibility if you don't answer uh, it publicly in a way that is consistent and believable and accurate. Uh, we've seen many incidents in the federal government in which the initial estimates of the number of records is issued immediately after the incident occurs and then is revised a day later, and then revised again a day later, and then after that, and pretty soon it becomes kind of dissipated and we don't really know what the real number is, just that it's very big. Also, admitting that you've made a mistake is very difficult. It's against our nature as human beings. We don't wanna show our weakness. But if you can, you actually gain credibility in the long run, even though it's a bitter pill to swallow initially. Uh, there was a recent incident in which a major security vendor was actually hacked. Now what's more embarrassing than a hack if you're a security vendor? However, instead of hiding the incident, they came out and publicly admitted exactly what happened and gave every detail that they came up with, and their details were extensive, on exactly what the hackers did and how they carried it out as a public service the reputation damage was minimized and in fact it may have even helped their reputation because it showed that they were being responsible cyber citizens. So keep that in mind when responding to an incident that there's a significant public relations dimension to the incident. In addition, recognize that the damage to the reputation is to your organization and agencies tend to think about that but in the recent OPM hack I think there is a sea change in the recognition of who is really damaged and much of that revolves around the fact that there were so many people whose, re whose records were compromised that really they were the victims and rec by emphasizing that in your public relations you also enhance your reputation as a responsible cyber citizen or public citizen. Now s once you have your plan in place uh, in addition to the PR aspects you also need to plan obviously for the, the um, technical response, how to, how to shut down systems, when to sh shut down systems, how many systems are affected, how many people are affected. This, these are not easy decisions, but if you have a plan and more importantly, if you rehearse and practice that plan in advance, things will go that much more smoothly in the inevitably chaotic circumstances that follow a, an incident. Rehearsing the plan is required by NIST guidelines and uh, controls, but all too often that exercise becomes a very dry, hollow exercise, kind of like a fire drill where people just resentfully or begrudgingly step through it, but they don't really pay that much attention because they don't think that it's really gonna happen to them or they have something better to do. What I've found, however, is that in some cases, you can make a game out of the process. And I, by that, I don't mean that you trivialize it or turn it into a frivolous exercise. And more in the context of a military war game, which are not frivolous at all. They're serious practices and serious rehearsals for very, very potentially dangerous situations. 
you can turn these games into serious exercises, number one, and also make them competitive. People pay much more attention when there's something at stake, even if it's something trivial, trivial like, haha, I won the contingency plan game or I won the incident response game. People get engaged and they retain what they learned and that retention will be very important when the disaster or the uh, breach actually does occur. So uh, we're also uh, seeing in federal agencies a lot of interest in and unfortunately also confusion over the issue of threat intelligence sharing. There are requirements in most agencies to share information about your breach with various agencies and with various um, organizations. Uh, for instance, the computer emergency response team, the CVEs, various other organizations, but there is a wide variety of law and bill currently pending before Congress that has to do with what's required with sharing information about threat intelligence. I did a search recently on Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act in Google and came up with no fewer than four laws pending before Congress and the Senate, which unfortunately have not made much progress, if, if any progress has been made at all. As recently as August 5th of this year, there was a bill that went before Congress and their decision was to table the issue. Now I understand there are other issues facing Congress. Cybersecurity is not their whole world. They have other things such as the Iran nuclear deal that they need to deal with. But some of these laws date back to 2012 and have just floundered and gone nowhere. They often overlap. Sometimes they conflict with each other. Uh, in, in addition to laws that are specifically designed to address the issue of information sharing, there are also laws that are general cybersecurity laws, or bills I should say, that include information sharing as part of their more comprehensive approach. So it's very confusing. There are also new organizations that have been set up. Uh, it's very confusing. I think the best way for an agency to obtain information about threat intelligence is to leverage worldwide intelligence networks such as Semantics Global Intelligent Network, or, or GIN as they, as they call it, which provides real-time voluminous information about threats and new threats as they occur. This is no trivial task. According to Symantec's Internet Security Threat Report that came out recently, no fewer than 317 million new malware variants occurred in 2014. That's nearly a million a day. That's a lot of new threats. Uh, to say nothing of other types of threats that are not malware, malware variants, but uh, zero days as they're called. That is, new threats that are not already known or not just variants of existing threats. So when it comes to incident response, incidents response, what we need to do is to make sure you have a plan, exercise the plan thoroughly, have well-trained staff, and for future planning, look very carefully at automated threat response capabilities, which are emerging as a very important new technology in the area of cybersecurity.